Hey everyone, I just finished playing Last Epoch 1.0 tonight. And in this video, we're going to go over how the launch day went, my first impressions of the game so far, and the updates made to it. And after that, at the end of the video, we're going to review the player feedback and my overall take so far. I hope you'll join me and stick around. Let's get to it. Tonight, 11th Hour Games released Last Epoch 1.0. The hype prior to the launch was nothing like ever seen before for an indie studio like 11th Hour Games. They sold over a million copies, and if you spoke to anybody about the game, they would tell you they were definitely going to give it a try. The writing was on the wall for all to see. The demand for the game on launch day was going to be huge. Well, they were not wrong. Players came in hordes. Although the indie studio was prepared and purchased extra service just in case the demand needed it, upon launch of 1.0, it was evident the servers could not keep up with the volume of players just to play the game. Issues like players not being able to log in online mode. If they were lucky enough even to get into the game, they were immediately greeted with issues with scene transitions, matchmaking issues, especially when transitioning from town zones. Basically, your player could not move to the next scene of the game, many receiving the LE61 error, which was a matchmaking error. Eventually, the server issues became more stable, and after four to five hours of the release of 1.0, many players were able to create characters in online mode. As of tonight, there are still server issues with many players still not being able to create a character in online mode. However, the devs have reported that they are making improvements and are improving stability and will continue to work on it until it's fully rectified. 11th Hour Games has also communicated that they will continue to work on addressing these issues and have been humbled by the massive turnout. Now, as far as my experience, I was able to create an online character and was able to get my hardcore SSF Warlock to Act 3. And I have to say, every minute of the journey was fun and exciting. The changes made with 1.0 are glaringly evident in a very positive way. The lighting changes are brilliant. The combat is much more fluid and improved. The UI updates look crisp and sharper. The quality of life features in this game, like the loot filter and the sorting and one click of a button to store all your crafting materials in your character inventory, is second to none. It's truly remarkable how the quality of life features in this game are so polished and rewarding, making for a game that is just fun to play. The game just looks and feels like a polished ARPG. I had a lot of fun tonight. Even with all the service and matchmaking issues in the beginning, I still was able to enjoy my time and I have to say, I was really sad I had to log out and I can't wait to get back in. This game so far has been a joy to play. Now, as far as how the launch went, you can't deny this is probably not how 11th Hour Games wanted to launch their game and them getting out of early access to full release. I don't think any dev team would kind of want the server problems they had on their launch of their game. No development team would want that. However, I have to say it's pretty it's a pretty interesting story now that I've had time to look into the details and know what was going on behind the scenes uh, with the development team and how quickly and aggressively they were tackling the issues. Uh, I'm part of the last Epoch uh, Discord, so we were getting constantly updated from the development team on what was going on 
and what were they doing? And I have to say, they were on it uh, immediately and were providing us with updates as they were providing everyone on social media. Uh, so again, speaking to the transparency style of this development team, but let's look and try to understand what happened here. Not purely from a, not from a technical standpoint, because that's above my pay grade, just getting an understanding and, and really what kind of volume this game had on launch day. And we're going to go over to, cause this game is on steam. Obviously, if we go over to steam DB, you can see here that last epoch, it peaked at 152,000 players. That was actually its 24 hour peak, like literally from the get go, 152,000 players tried to get on and play this game and hence why they could not keep up with the demand and we were getting all these matchmaking and scene transition issues. Now, the response to that immediately was they were advising everyone, look, if you want to play, just go and play offline mode while we try to figure this out. So... For the most part, a lot of people just went into offline mode and played that way and waited until they knew the issues were resolved in uh, being able to play online. Um, so a lot of people still played the game. Um, be and thank God this game does have an offline mode. Um, so that was very nice to have if you really, really wanted to try the game out but you can see why the servers got slammed i don't think 11 hour 11th hour games was prepared and expected this kind i don't know why they sold a million copies i would think these kind of numbers are representative of that but what do i know anyway as you can see they're consistently in the 120 130 140 range um and uh you can see right now there's 114,000 playing the game. And so understandably, the servers got slammed. They weren't prepared for it. And I'm sure they're going to learn a lot from this. Again, this is an industry studio. This is not a AAA company. Not that that's an excuse. Because at the end of the day, they did sell a million copies. So they, I think they should have been more prepared. But that's me Hindsight's 2020, right? But the real story of this is number one, applause to just the pure amount of people that are playing the game. And and, and I know why uh, they're playing the game. It's because it's a really enjoyable game. Uh, I, I had fun playing it. But you would think, and this is where the story lies, in my opinion, you would think with four to five to six hours and actually it's still not a hundred percent fixed um, now you are able to create a character online and play i did tonight i was able to play all night in on an online character on my hardcore online player all night with no issues uh, now i started playing in the evening so a lot of the issues and the stabilities had been addressed although they still exist um, it's not 100% fixed yet. But my point is I was able to enjoy the game with no matchmaking issues once I logged in online and started leveling up my Warlock. But you would think with that kind of five to six hours of stability issues, of matchmaking issues, of people not being able to log in, not being able to create an online character, you would think the the house was going to be burned down when it comes to the player feedback and the community feedback naturally these this issue although they happen with every game um you would think that the just the reviews especially on steam where you can review bomb games you would think that this game was going to get crucified well surprise surprise they have an 82% approval rating 
on Steam. They have almost 30,000 up positive reviews and they have 6,000 negative reviews. Just crazy. And here in lies the story to me. Because, you know, you're probably going to ask yourself, Sammy, how's that possible? The servers were not stable for four or five hours right from the get-go. Players were not able to play the game. And when they did get into the game, the screen froze or they weren't able to transition to the next scene and they received matchmaking errors. How can this be an 82% approval rating? See, this is where how you market, how you communicate your game ends up paying dividends throughout the game being launched, being played, being developed. See, when you take the mentality that 11th Hour Games takes, and that is one of a studio that is very honest and transparent, is very, very, very receptive to their players' feedback. And I'll give you an example. When 1.0 one, one was communicated, if you all remember, part of their new trading economy where you have two factions that you can pick, one is where you want to buy and sell items in the economy, and another faction is for solo self-found players where you want to, players that want to earn the gear that they wear. So you can join that faction and the quality and the quantity of drops improves because you play by yourself. So you rely on the drops, right? So that, when that was communicated, if part of that communication involved, if you were to pick the trading one, okay, the trading faction, part of the ranking system was, or the core of that faction was in the beginning, as you're ranking up, you could only sell the lower rare items, right? So the whites and the yellows, for example, or the, sorry, the whites and the blues. And you had to rank up in order to sell higher quality items. Now, that's the way it was communicated, but immediately the fan base, the player base, got wind of it and started providing feedback to 11th Hour Games and saying, hey, why are you restricting trade with the rarity of the items that we can buy and sell? Why can't we just sell any rarity from the beginning? Why do we have to wait and rank up? Well, 11th Hour Games... As soon as they heard that, came out and said, you know what? You guys are right. There's going to be no restrictions. You can buy and sell any rarity of item right from the get-go, irrespective of what rank you are in that faction. My point to that is they're receptive to the feedback. They take the quality of the game over anything else and the player base is more forgiving for that, if, if that makes any sense. I, I hope I can articulate what I'm trying to express here. 11th Hour Games has so much goodwill with the community. What happened tonight can happen, and they're not getting crucified for it. They're, they're definitely hearing a lot. They're getting backlash, don't get me wrong, because I'm going to tell you something. These 6,000 negative reviews wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the service issue, uh, the server issues. Now, no, irrespective of what game, you are always going to get a certain percentage of negative reviews just because other games in Last Epoch's genre, their fanboys are going to come in and negative bomb the game just because. They want to protect their game, right? Irrespective, right? But 
that's how it works. You and and then of course this is the internet, so you're gonna get trolls that just, you know, they negative bomb every game, right? Because they just wanna negative. They wanna be negative. You know, it's easier to burn down a house than it is to build a house, right? Anyone can burn down a house, but it takes somebody important to build a house with talent and skill. Um, so being negative is easy. Uh, so my point is this would be much higher if it wasn't for the service issues, but the fact that it's still 82%, boom, to me just speaks to how much goodwill this studio has earned with its player base and they're willing to accept the fact that they just weren't as well prepared that they needed to be because of the demand. And to me, there's two stories with the launch of 1.0. Number one, this studio is backed by a by its player base. It, it really is. There's a lot of goodwill there. And I think the player base that are open-minded will give room for this game to grow and develop to where it is a unbelievable ARPG. Now, that's the first thing. The second thing is that this game is already polished. It's a poly it feels polished. The updates they've made to this game, like I said in my previous segment, the lighting, the quality of life features, it just the 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 campaign it, it, it's it's nice. The level of difficulty, it's not easy but it's not super difficult. And the level, the level, uh, the entry level requirement, like the knowledge, you, it, it, it's not daunting. You don't need, you do not need a PhD to learn this game and thrive in this game. You really don't. And, and I know it gets compared a lot, like inevitably it's gonna get compared because they're all in the same genre to PoE and D4, and I've said this before, it's it's an in-between. It's not as easy as Diablo 4, and it's not as difficult to understand as PoE. It's right dab in the middle, which makes it such a sweet spot. And the combat feels smooth. I have to say, the only the only thing I have as far as and and I found this, I found myself doing this tonight, and and it's because of when I was my D4 days, and that was, I was hitting the space bar a lot uh, tonight, and that was, you know, to dodge, right? Uh, or I don't know if they call it dodging, but to basically move forward, I think it's a dodge. It's definitely not a roll. I think that's PoE, or that's going to be PoE too. Uh, but I found myself hitting the space bar in order to, like, jump forward. Uh, that, that would be nice in the game. Um, but that's one little take on that everything else stellar graphically this game is polished like really sharp a huge improvement to how it was and thank god because it needed it the ui like i said earlier crisp sharp the skills just the the depth of variety you have this game already has polished campaign a polished like um polished class balances it has polished itemization it has polished crafting and the end game although it's polished that to me and again i have not gotten there yet in 1.0 but i suspect really and they've already said that their focus moving forward is enhancing the end game and adding to the end game so that is their number one priority going forward from 1.0 which is good to hear because i personally think when i do get to the end game i suspect unless there's something there that i haven't read i suspect we are going to hit that wall of variety 
different things to do. That's where I am very anxious to see when I do get there, what it's going to be like and how I'm going to react to it. That is, but that's me looking for it. I, I can't comment on it at hundred percent because I have not gotten to the end game in 1.0. So we'll see um, because the factions is going to provide a whole nother area of grinding because you're going to have to rank up. You're going to have to do quests with the factions. There are dungeons, but the dungeons are limited from what I've read. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. That's really the only question mark I have to when I get there. How good is it going to be? But only time will tell. But my first impressions, this game it's a polished RPG, and it's only going to get better. This is their first step. This is their first step in full release. First step. And they already have a lot of check marks. Um, and then, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, they have leaderboards. This already in the game. We're, we're not waiting for it. It's there. Um, so they have a lot of check marks. And the future looks bright, I think. Um, but only time will tell. We'll see. And uh, props to 11th Hour Games. Uh, obviously, a misstep with the servers. No doubt about it. Uh, I, I think no one can argue that they should have been better prepared. And this issue of the matchmaking, although no one can foresee anything or predict what's going to happen, I think the, the amount of time it took, and, and they were on it right away, it should have been dealt with a lot quicker although i have to say i personally didn't experience it uh to that degree of five six hours but from the for the people that were there immediately when the game launched when 1.0 launched obviously they experienced hours and hours and hours and hours of delay uh anyway uh i hope they learn and i'm sure they will and they've, they're a very transparent development team. So uh, I'm sure they're going to take it on the chin, own up to it, and let everybody know exactly what happened. And they've already said sorry and that they're working on it. And they gave everyone an in-game gift. Um, so a cosmetic item. My first impressions, I can't wait to get back on and continue my grind. I, I suspect that uh, this game, I'm going to be able to grind a lot. I'm very interested to try all the classes. So we'll see. Only time will tell. Anyway, I wanted to give you my first impressions and give you my take on what a night for 11th hour games. There was the good, the bad, and the ugly. It encompassed everything tonight. But as you can see, it's not scaring players away. If anything, it's just cementing how good this game is. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. If you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And if you want to catch me live, I stream on YouTube and Twitch. Sammy Caps is the channel name every evening. Come and check out my Warlock SSF Hardcore journey. It's going to be an epic one. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.